Hey everybody, Jim Schofield here, and today I'm with Angus. How's it going, Angus? Good, thanks, Jim. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. So, what's today's topic? We're talking about zoom lenses today. Big topic. Huge. Very important. Something that we use all the time. And why is it that we're using zoom lenses in production so much? They're incredibly versatile. With one lens on a body, you can get a huge amount of coverage. Right. So we really have the ability to change our focal length quickly and easily. Yeah. Um, scenarios that we'd be using zoom lenses? Uh, corporate. Industrial, uh, event, maybe journalism, yep. and education. Yeah, well, we're using them on all of these cameras right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Good, and here we are at the Catskill Distilling Company, yep. an ideal location for a shoot where we might be doing something like a travel show or mm -hmm. food show, and we actually have some stuff that we've shot with zoom lenses here yeah. that we're going to show as we talk about all of this stuff. Yeah. And uh, we have a camera system which is sort of set up in a typical kind of way for us, it's mm. a shoulder mounted rig. We can also tripod mount it. Yeah. We've got a 60D here. Yep. And the lens it's living on here? It's a 24105. Right. Great lens. Yeah. Absolutely. Very versatile. Yeah. Um, has image stabilization. Really useful. And useful. really something that we can use for a lot of types of production. Yeah. Now, one of the things that we should talk about probably right away is when we're choosing zoom lenses, the type of sensor you have in your camera has something to do with that choice. Of course, right. So obviously on a 5D, which is a full frame camera, a lens like the 24105 is going to be considerably wider at its widest end than when you put it on a crop sensor camera. Right. So on the crop sensor camera, the lens becomes the equivalent angle of view of a 35 to 170. Right. So, you know, not as wide at the wider end, but you get more of a punch in at the longer end. Right. So it has advantages in that situation. Yeah. All right. So now that we sort of understand the difference between using a zoom on a crop sensor camera and a full frame camera, mm -hmm. let's talk about some of these other lenses yeah. and why we'd use them. Sure. What about this one? Yeah. Well, this is a 16 to 35 f 2.8 uh, on a full frame camera like the 5D Mark II. It's a fantastic wide lens for tight interiors. Uh, architectural situations, right. really useful. Mm. But then you put it onto a 60D, a crop sensor camera, and it's still a great wide lens. It's a sort of a medium wide to standard lens, which is incredibly useful as well. Yeah, and so this is a great establishing shot lens too. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. locations yeah. and things like that. Okay, good. Let's talk about some of the footage that we shot. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple of lenses here that are sort of our go-to lenses when we're shooting interviews and things yeah, like that. Definitely. And uh, why are they? Well, I mean, a lens like the 2470 is a fantastic lens for an establishing shot or a, or a sort of medium interview shot. And then we go to the 70 to 200, which is a really great lens, especially if you're in a two-camera situation. You could have one lens on one camera, and then this guy could be used to punch in as you're doing the interview to right. create different angles of view. And so we shot some stuff with Monty, who's the owner here, and we shot with the zoom lenses, and we wanted to illustrate a couple of different ways that we use them. Right. What we're doing is we are zooming all the way in to the subject with either the 24 to 70, yeah. this is the 70 to 200 F4. Yeah. We are getting tack sharp focus. It's great because we can use that zoom feature on yeah. the camera, the 5X or the 10X to do that. Yeah. And then we can actually vary our focal length yeah. as we're shooting. Sure. And uh, these two lenses actually hold focus yeah. really, really no, well. Really great for that. And so when we're shooting an interview, we have the ability to change that focal length. But what the other thing that we did, which is pretty interesting, is we sort of floated the camera on one of these shots. And then as the interviewer asked the question, when we're going into the answer with the subject, we see that move. Yeah. Catskill Distilling arose out of an idea that my wife and I had to bring a new type of business to Bethel. And exactly. that's called a snap a zoom. A snap zoom. Yeah, exactly. You may not see it that often, but it's a creative choice. Right. What we do more often times, though, is what? Well, I think you basically would treat the lens more like a variable prime. So when the interviewer is asking a question, you can zoom in a little bit, recompose the frame to give you, you know, a completely different look. Right. This is just an evolutionary pattern that began with that thought. Let me tell you why I'm passionate about this. And so when we see those interviews on TV for those news programs, we generally start a little bit wider 
yeah. the beginning of the interview. Yeah. And then as the subject matter starts to get a little bit deeper, we start to dig in a little bit. Exactly. We start to punch in. Mm -hmm. And we're not seeing that move, as you said, no. but we're changing the focal length and we're treating it as a variable prime. Yeah, exactly. And that's done all of the time. Yeah. Uh, same thing when we are cutting to the footage of you know the different things that are in the distillery. Yeah. You know Matt was actually shooting with this on the shoulder mounted rig mm -hmm. and because he was you know able to change his shots his focal length so fast we were able to run around and get a lot of coverage. Yeah, you can get a lot done in a very short amount of time. Right. And he's not doing those snap zooms, we're just changing it and using it as a variable prime. Exactly. And that's a great way to do it. We also have some specialized lenses that are designed specifically for crop sensor cameras like the 60D and the 7D, right? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's look at this one. Sure. So this is the 10 to 22 mil EFS lens. Only for the crop sensor cameras, it won't work on a 5D. It won't even fit on a 5D. Exactly. Got it. I also want to mention that these EFS lenses are designed specifically for the crop sensor cameras like the 60D and the 7D APS-C right. sensors. Mm -hmm. So they have to be that sensor size. So when we talk about something like the 1D Mark IV, which is APS-H, yeah. they're not for those. Exactly. Tell us a little bit more about this lens. Yeah. So we know the 10 to 22 is a great wide zoom but there's something else we need to know about the lens, and that's that it's got a variable maximum aperture. Got it. At the wide end, it's f3.5, and at the long end, it's f4.5. Right. So the best way to use this lens is if you know you're gonna be zooming in and out, is to set your aperture at 4.5, so you won't get any unexpected exposure changes as you zoom. Makes sense. Yeah. And in interview style setups, that's not really a problem, because we're lighting the interview, and if we shoot, with our aperture wide open anyway, the shallow depth of field is gonna work against us. Yeah. We wanna have shallow depth of field, but we want people to be able to move around in the space yeah. as well. We very rarely shoot with these wide open for an interview setup. Right, so we're usually shooting between, I would say a five and an eight yeah. on, you know, uh, on those types of situations. Yeah. So again, that's why things like the 70 to 200 F4 work really well for interviews. Exactly. That's why we can use this 24 to 105 for interview style setups. Yeah. And of course, when you go outside, you don't have any of those considerations. Exactly. When we're out in the wild, you know, it doesn't really matter. Exactly. And that actually brings us to this lens right here, which is the 100 to 400. This is also a variable aperture. Yeah. We've got a 4.5 to 5.6. So same rule applies. If you want that aperture to stay consistent, set it to a 5.6, yeah. and then you can go between 100 and 400 and keep it at a 5.6. Exactly. Good. So lots of different options, and there's also this lens right mm -hmm. here. And this is also an EFS lens. Yeah. Tell us about this one. This is the 17 to 55, and this is a consistent f2.8, and it's a fantastically versatile lens to leave on a crop sensor camera. So what's its effective angle of view? So it's uh, 17 to 55 translates into about a 28 to 90. So you really get a lens that will give us something on the wide end, yeah. and we can go all the way to a telephoto. Yeah, you can do an awful lot with this lens. That's a great lens. Yeah. Lots of different lenses, lots of different applications, but the thing that we should really point out is that we don't have to go out and buy six or seven zoom lenses. Exactly. That's not the point. Yeah. It's finding the right lens for the type of shooting that you're doing. Yeah. For a lot of people, that might mean a lens like the 24 to 105 yep. that could live on either a full frame camera like the 5D Mark II yep. or a camera like the 60D or the 7D. Sure. And then for other people, if they're shooting strictly crop sensor, you mentioned this one. That's a great go to lens. Fast zoom lens, yeah. 17 to 55. You talked about our effective field of view being about a 28 to about a 90. Yeah. So that's you know really a workhorse lens. Yep. And we've got all of these other choices when we're shooting interviews and things like that. Yeah. So we should take a look at a little bit more of the footage that we've shot. Yeah. Uh, Matt actually took this setup and with a couple of different zoom lenses, we shot an interview mm -hmm. and again, using it like a variable prime yeah. and then going into a shoulder mounted scenario where he can quickly change focal lengths to get those cutaways and that B-roll footage. Yeah. So uh, I think that about covers it for That's, Zoom lenses. I think so. Thank you very much, Angus. Thanks, Let's take Jim. a look at this stuff. Great. Let me tell you about the Catskill Distilling Company. This plan was hatched maybe 10 years ago to open a distillery in Bethel. I decided that I needed a change in career from horse veterinarian to distiller. And uh, my wife and I decided to pool our resources and uh, begin to make distilled spirits from local products. We're using wheats and corns 
and ryes that are produced locally here in uh, this area of New York. The interesting thing about a distillery is that you can create basically what you want. It, it's a matter of creativity. It's like being in a kitchen. It has to do with fermentation. It has to do with the stills and the ability to know ahead of time what type of product that you will end up with from the primary uh, grains or botanicals that we are going to be using here. With this type of equipment, we can virtually make any type of distilled spirit. It all depends on how we configure the different pipes and tubes that uh, are been made available to us here. It is truly the state of the art piece of equipment that one can acquire for making various types of distilled spirits.